morning. Welcome, everybody. We've got a, a lovely group. My name is Daniel Bernard, and it is an absolute pleasure for me to introduce our speaker and the person who's leading our workshop today, Miss Elizabeth Kofi. She is uh, the Global Leadership and Transformation Committee Honorary Member and London Chapter Member for DLC. Elizabeth founded Spark Leadership in 2005 to advise board executives on leading change in their people and in their organizations. Elizabeth is an internationally recognized consultant, speaker, and author focused on developing CEOs and their successors at board, at the board level of FTSE 100 and Global 500 companies to achieve stretching organization strategies. She has also received numerous awards, which include the 2020 Pioneering Women Leader Award and the 2018 to 2020 Woman Super Achiever Award from the Economic Times. We're extremely excited, I know that I'm excited for her workshop today, which gives an overview of how to steer a course around organizational barriers to influence actively in an ethical and systematic way. No time more for me to speak it with, right over to the main event. Happy to hand over to you, Elizabeth, for this wonderful workshop. Elizabeth, welcome to DLC Workshop. Thank you. Thank you so much for that generous uh, introduction. Uh, I'm really thrilled to be here today. This is a course that um, I absolutely love teaching, and I, I teach it about four times a month and have been doing so for about 15 years. So without any further ado, let me let me start. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled to say that this is a course I love to teach and people love to be in. Um, and I can be very humble in saying that because I didn't design this course. Uh, the course has been designed by a guy called Dr. Joel DeLuca, who uh, studied the topic of strategic influencing for 20 years. Uh, with 11,000 people, um, over nine multinational companies. So um, let's move on. So this, this um, model is a model um, by, it's not by Joel, it's by two um, British academics called Badley and James who came up with this model in 1987. So let's look at the two um, axes. So you have that north-south axis, which is really about levels of awareness of the politics in the organization. On the top, you have high levels of awareness, on the bottom, you have low levels of awareness. And then the east-west axis is on the right side. It's basically about how much integrity you have in your behavior. On the right side, we have people acting with high levels of integrity. So they say what they do and they do what they say. And on the left-hand side, we have low levels of integrity, which Badley and James refer to as psychological game playing. And in this kind of model, Joel used to kind of look at the left-hand side and say, this is the dark side. This is when you start moving into unethical or immoral behaviors. Um, and the, the motivation for the people on the left tends to be about me, me, me. What's good for my career? What's good for my um, status and my wealth? Whereas on the right-hand side, uh, you tend to get people who are interested in the collective. Um, so they might be thinking about the division or they might be thinking about the team or they might be thinking about the company or the country. You look at this model, do you, think, oh, I know somebody who's in one of those boxes. Well, actually, I think I know people in every box, for a start. And I also think mm -hmm. I uh, can identify myself in a couple of, in more than one of those boxes over my career. I think from my point of view, the, the main difference to, that I could always point uh, on is the difference between putting yourself first or putting the organization first. And what kind of behaviors would you see um, in, let's say, the clever foxes? Instead of speaking openly to a forum, they tap up people individually uh, to convince uh, in a wily way of their opinion. It's a good thing for us to kind of debunk to some degree. The people on the top both sides are doing that. One side is doing it ethically and the other side is not. So let's say Sanchi is one of my rivals and I want to make sure that her program doesn't get funded, even if her program is fantastic. There's positive ways of doing it as well. I can go behind the scenes, Daniel, and have a chat with you and say, listen, I think she's, she's come up with a real winner here. I think it's gonna do this, that, and the other thing for the organization. So both of those kind of conversations have happen but one is ethical and the other one is not. Rajiv, let me pick up on your, your kind of comments here. In terms of uh, self-identification, I place myself somewhere in the borderline between innocent and wise. Uh, it takes me a bit of time to understand the 
different layers of uh, motives you know that people may have so i am a slow slow picker of the political motives in an organization have you kind of strayed over to the left at all any any time in your in your career i don't think so although there have been always temptations of uh, you know giving it back to people the way they are behaving what i'm hearing from from you two is that there's a kind of alignment naturally on the right hand side and indeed i think people who are drawn to this course which is about the ethical version of of uh, strategic influencing are probably going to be that way minded but i'm keen to kind of understand with you a little bit more um, about what goes on on the left hand side so let me ask a question to the group what, how would you distinguish between that kind of clever fox on the top and the inept donkey. And let me just clarify, inept is not a person who's bad at their job, but rather inept at strategic influencing. Well, I think uh, both the characters are there in every organization, I believe. The, just the difference is that it, it really takes some skill to understand who's the fox and who's the uh, inept. How would you decide? I mean, what would you be able to see with the donkey, do you think, that you couldn't see with the fox? Uh, I believe there is no wrong in being a fox or the donkey because uh, if a donkey thinks to be a fox, it cannot be. And if a fox tries to be a donkey, it cannot be. So it's basically a personal strategic positioning that you do. From a realistic perspective, I feel uh, it is difficult for organizations even if finding uh, the person. For example, if there are two people, one is not highly ethical, the second person is highly ethical. Okay. So, and if the first person is very productive, giving high results to the organization, and if the second person who's not so effective, but not giving, I mean, as in very ethical, but not giving much of results. So, uh, it is actually a question of uh, uh, commercial viability and integrity at the same time, which one would be uh, on a high, uh, longer tenure uh, asset for you, I believe. I want to um, pick up on this distinction between kind of commercial successfulness versus um, ethics in your strategic influencing, because the course is really about the latter of those two. And the reality is that you can be commercially really good at your job in any one of the four boxes. When people first come into um, jobs uh, after they've done their, their schooling over the course of your career, which make you more alert and more aware to the politics happening. You might start out on the right, but you actually might start out on the left if you grow up in a family situation or other aspects that are influential like maybe your faith, and that's okay. Your moral compass is on the left. One of the things I like to also say, because Daniel talked about how um, foxes tend to hire other foxes or attract other foxes. While that is true, it is also true that foxes like having donkeys and lambs in their teams. They're easy to manipulate. Foxes are always in competition. If you think about, you know, the politics of today, we look around at world leaders um, in this Ukraine-Russian situation, and there is one leader who is saying, things that we all know to be untrue um, and is very good at that. So it's effective at lying. But there are other people who lie um, but not very effectively, so we can kind of see through it. And those are like the donkeys. So when you think of organization politics, what words and phrases come to mind? Stressful, <laughs> promotion, maneuvering, navigating for success, culture, manipulation, bureaucratic. Interesting kind of combination we get here, some positives, success, some neutral, and some negatives. When Joel asked the 11,000, this is what he heard from them. Backstabbing, brown nosing, boot licking, style over substance, manipulative, hidden agendas, old boy networks, deals under the table, turf struggles, and my personal favorite, testosterone overload. So now we're going to move into a case. Basically, um, this is a case which was a, an actual Fortune 500 case. Joel did not work with this company, but one of his friends did. So the data is real data. And in this, I'm gonna play two roles, but my first role is I'm gonna pretend to be Alice, your boss, and you are all part of my marketing team. Um, I was hired a year ago by the CEO to first put more emphasis on marketing with you, but also to look to the future of the organization. So together, you and I have put together a, an approach which is called the Chromium Project. And in the case today is Monday afternoon and on Friday, there's going to be a meeting of me and my four peers to decide upon budget for three 
potential projects. And Chromium is one of those. So I've been in the company only a year, but you've been there for many, many years. So you know all the ins and outs of the company and who likes whom and all of that stuff. So I'm going to actually ask you to think about what strategic influencing should happen between the Monday today and Friday when that those decisions are going to be taken. Let me tell you a little bit about the other two projects. So one of the projects is being led by uh, Bill Stanton. He's the head of R&D and New Technology. This is, while it's a nice project, it's not actually essential. And we could defer it for three years without any negative impact. The third project is a manufacturing plant. And basically the head of manufacturing, Tom Ansel, and he really wants to leave a fresh new manufacturing plant. And he's been trying for the last two years to get the capital to be able to do that. So those are the three projects that we're going to be kind of deciding upon. And the CEO of this company, Milford, is undecided and said, listen, you guys have the conversation and decide amongst yourselves which ones we're going to fund. We know that we can't fund all three. So you see there are three uh, men who have been there for over 20 years. Craig and I are kind of the newbies and I'm the only woman in this team. Part of what we know is that the Chromium project is going to be expensive in the sense that it's going to cost 30% of cash flow for three years. In the fourth year, it's going to start to get a return and it'll get a 20% return for 10 years. What we've got here is we have a diagram which you guys can manipulate. So you'll see there's a line, for example, between Owen and Al. So we know something from the cards about that relationship. Is that a positive relationship of trust or a negative tr relationship? You'll see that the CEO is in the middle with red lines going out from him. Who does the CEO trust most? second most, third most, fourth, and then least. Now you'll notice that there's two blue lines missing between Owen and Tom and Owen and Craig. That's because Joel has not given us that information. This is a slide that I've kind of put in to help you out. It gives you a grid in which you can do quantitative analysis. And I'm going to ask you what strategic influencing moves should happen between the Monday and the Friday. Akash is going to be sending um, to you information. And this is basically for you to be able to participate in the group. And then we want you to come together as soon as possible and begin to share what you know, so that you be can begin to think through what strategic influencing should happen. Uh, Rajiv, Vishesh, Liz, and I, we are all a team. We have uh, the case cards, the, the ones that Avakash has sent us, and there is uh, one case card each against our name. So the first step is that we are all digesting the information that is there on the case card that's against our name. Alongside all of us together had to chew the information that's on all the four case cards, share the information with each other. We need to digest the information uh, on the case cards uh, that, is, that is there to fill in this template first, talking about uh, the highest uh, trust um, relationship with the CEO uh, from one to five, and then positive or negative relationships for which we have the minuses and the pluses to pick from, where we need to think through uh, what is the sequence, the first three steps that uh, should be taken to uh, as to who would speak to whom and in what order and what would they talk about. Now, what we, what we could do, an invitation that we can all take time to go through the case cuts that's against our name and uh, then come back together and share the information that all of us have as a group. Now is that all four of us have some piece of information that we've read and uh, we have this grid to fill, uh, bit, you know, uh, together as a group. So one way is to go through uh, the case cards that we have uh, against our name and share what is that information. And now that we have uh, we've read our case cards, we can also share information about uh, that's there on our case card with the other person. And we also have access to the case cards of other people in case we need some references. Mm -hmm. So uh, Rajiv, we start from you and Vishesh and uh, Liz and I can join. I'll, I'll kind of... Uh give an overview of what exactly uh, is in my card. The CEO actually is, is got a good relationship with uh, Owen uh, and uh, he values his opinion highest. That's the first All thing. Right. So uh, Owen okay. is actually a, is the person who, uh, who needs to be influenced quite a bit because uh, any but on the personal level, he, he wants money to educate his children. He wants to become the CEO. And uh, he sees very marginal benefit in this project uh, of the Chrome project. And he also feels that combined uh, projects, all three of them, 
would be very detrimental for the first two years at least. And uh, CEO and Owen agree that they want at least 40% cash flow uh, coming in. And uh, another important point is that uh, Owen and Alice are, are not really on a good wicket. And Owen does not trust Alice at all for her judgment and sees okay. her threat to moving into the CEO slot. As far as Owen's opinion about Bill Stanton is concerned, he feels that Bill is quite reckless in, uh, in his judgment. And so that's a negative relationship uh, with Bill. Mm -hmm.